to Jesus I surrender all, to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily live. I surrender all, I surrender all, all to Thee. To Jesus I surrender, humbly at his feet I bow, worldly pleasures all forsaken, take me, Jesus, take me now. I surrender all, I surrender all, all to thee. Well, that is a nice way for me to start the day. I surrender all. And I've been up since 4.30 in the morning and uh, maybe in my head a little bit. So it's really good to hear at this time to get out of my head, to sing that song, I surrender all. Amen. What a message in a song and what a great way to start the day. And I see the, the sunshine um, coming up. I see the, the sunrise. It's so nice to be up at this time of the morning and to be engaged, and aren't we blessed to have this video that we can connect even across the miles. I see here Susan on, um, and you were on on our Bible study um, on Friday, and I see a number of people we recognize here, uh, Sharmar, uh, Joe, great to see you guys, um, and uh, welcome, and good morning. This is uh, 6.30, just past 6.30 in the morning here in Denver, Colorado. I'm Pastor Kanan Harris, and we are blessed to be able to broadcast to you from my back porch on our morning service. We call this the sunrise service. It lasts about 10 or 12 minutes and we'll have a prayer and a scripture and a message and another song. But what a blessing to start our day together in uh, the word of the Lord in praising God together. Amen. Amen. I love this song. Amen. Well, great to see you all. And let's have a prayer together as we get started this day. Uh, let's center our hearts in our Lord Jesus Christ and by his Holy Spirit. Let us pray. And God, we just turn our hearts to you. And God, we trust in you. And we pray that you will supersede our thoughts and our, our fears and our worries, that you will, will guide us and direct us in the way that we should go, God, that we might trust in you and in your plan and purpose for our lives, indeed in your calling and your anointing on our lives. God, we do pray that you will cast your spirit upon us, that you will hold us in your hand. God, we do trust in you. Help us not to be directed by our fears, but to allow you to, to drive um, our lives and, and to drive our our purposes, God, so that we might arrive at your destination. God, we do ask your blessing upon each and every one. And God, we ask that we might find peace, that we might find strength and courage, and that we might find wisdom so that we can discern what is our part and, and what we need to turn over, that we need to, to turn over to you. God, help us to discern that we do have a role and a, and a responsibility, and God grant us strength and grant us courage for the task and for this uh, difficult time that we face. God, we know that uh, this world is um, in turmoil. We know that there is uh, violence and, and warfare. God, we know that there is disease and suffering. We know that there is, is poverty and death. But God, we do trust in you that we belong to a greater country that is a heavenly one. And God, help us to trust in your plan and your purpose for our lives so that we might keep our heads high and um, 
look others in the eye and be a light in the darkness in this hurting world. And God, we do ask your blessing upon each one who's in the sound of my voice. For God, we know you are the healer and we trust in you and in your power and in your purpose for our lives. And God, we claim this promise today in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And so glad that uh, you hung on. I have my eyes closed and I'm like, who's going to hang on with me through the prayer? And great uh, that we can join together. As I've mentioned so often, this is a blessing for me. This is good for me spiritually to start my morning and to get into the word and the prayer and the song. And so thank you for joining me and uh, blessing me with your company this morning. And I want to lift up the lesson that we have today. Uh, and this is the parable of Jesus. And it's in Luke and in chapter 13, beginning in verse 9, where the scripture said that Jesus told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, see here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig round it and put treasure and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good, but if not, you cut it down. So this is the word of the Lord. This is a hard lesson, the parable of the fig tree from Jesus, the very red letter words of Jesus in his parable in the gospel of Luke. Thanks be to God. The parable of the fig tree. And who is the the gardener. The gardener, of course, is God. God is the gardener. God is the one who, who treats the soil. And who is the one who's to cut it down? Well, uh, perhaps that's also God. It's, a, it's an interesting question, isn't it, in this story? Who are these characters? But then who is the fig tree? Is, are we the fig tree? Is the church the fig tree? Is our faithfulness the fig tree and the in ancient Israel, the fig tree was representative of Israel's fruitfulness or, or lack of, of fruitfulness. So I think we are the new Israel, the church. Each and every one of us in Jesus Christ is the new creation that God has promised. So that's the question. That fig tree, I do believe it represents us individually and it represents uh, the, us as the church. And the question is, are we bearing fruit? Are we bearing fruit? Well. What is the fruit? Remember the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, and self-control. Did I get all of them? Probably not, but the fruits of the Spirit, right? Those are the fruits. Are we bearing fruit? Are we loving one another? Are we walking in joy? Are, are we patient? Are we kind? Uh, do we bear with one another? What are those, those fruits of the Spirit? That, and are we exhibiting the fruits that God has called us? Indeed, we also, the fruits, I think, and I think of the serenity prayer as sort of an encapsulation of the gifts of God. God, grant me the serenity, which is peace, the courage, and the wisdom. We're going to sing a song this, this morning in our second service, God of grace and God of glory. Grant us wisdom. Grant us courage for the facing of this hour. Are those gifts of the Spirit? Wisdom, courage, are those gifts from God? Is that fruitfulness? So I think this is, is something that's saying, well, you know, God is looking at us and saying, are you bearing the fruits of the Spirit? Are you um, the, the tree that, that I planted? Are you, are you faithful to, to the plan and to the purpose and to the calling and the commission on your life? So if we have not love, then the scripture says you are like a, a banging gong or a, or a ringing cymbal. If we have not love, love is that fruit. So are we loving one another? And God says, if not, then you're not doing what I called you to do. And so we see that we were created for a purpose, and that is to fulfill God's plan, to, to be God's instrument. And so the, if we're not exhibiting those fruits, are we exhibiting courage in a, in a dark and difficult day? Or are we complacent? Uh, that, that song we sing this morning, A God of Grace and God of Glory, it says, save us from deep resignation. Have we resigned ourselves to the circumstance or do we have courage to, for the facing of this hour, as the song says? See, these fruits, if we're not bearing these fruits, then 
um, got this parable, it seems to suggest that we're not being the people that God has called us to be. So that's, it's a hard message in that way, but also this is a message of grace. Again, this is the gospel of grace. And so what does the story says? Say, the, the, the story say, says, if, the story says, it's, remember it's early in the morning, the, the story says that if we're not bearing fruit, if the tree is not bearing fruit, should it be cut down? And, and the story says no. The gardener, who is also God, said, bear with it, bear with it for yet another year and, and let me fertilize it. See, who does the fertilizing? God does the fertilizing. Leave it alone, he said and let me fertilize it. So then within a year it might bear fruit, and if it does not bear fruit in another year, then maybe cut it down. But see, this is a gospel of grace. This is saying if we're not fruitful, God is giving us a second chance, constant, countless second chances. God is the God of, of second chances. So I think this is a parable about a second chance. God is, is putting this in front of us and saying if we're failing to bear fruit, if we're failing to love, if we're failing to exercise courage and kindness and, and all of these things, then God's going to give us a second chance. But the story tells us how very serious this is because we were created to bear fruit. That is our purpose, and that is God's plan and purpose for us. So isn't that a, a powerful and, and interesting lesson? Um, you know, we could, I could go on about it in the, in the shortness of the time. Um, I'll call that to a close and, and grateful that you could join me this morning, and we are going to talk more. My wife and I are going to talk about this this morning in, in a conversation, so I'll be interested to hear what she has to say. But it's a lesson, it's a message about grace. God has given us another chance. Yes, God wants us to be fruitful, but God continues to offer second chances in Jesus Christ. Amen. Thanks be to God. And So let's go out. I'm going to we also have on this day, see, we choose the lessons that are, are lessons designated for the church on this day. And our, our uh, scripture um, from the Old Testament is Isaiah 55. Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, come to the waters. So I thought about that when I found this song I'm going to sing as we close. It's called Fill My Cup. It goes, fill my cup, let it overflow. Fill my cup, let it overflow. Fill my cup, let it overflow. Let it overflow with love. See, that's where it comes from. The gifts come from God, and, and then they are to fill our cup and to overflow. And these are, this is the fruitfulness that God uh, asks of us. Um, and God will, will continue to give us a, a second chance. That's the, the promise in the scripture. Um, so let's go out now today. And again, what a great way for me uh, to start the day. And thank you for joining me. Um, let's go out now with the benediction. Now may the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all through Jesus Christ, our Lord, this day and always. Amen.